Hello everybody, uh, today I want to do something I have uh, never done on this channel before and that's a pure talking video. I sit uh, just outside uh, the small uh, town of Tsetselag in uh, central Mongolia. Just came back from uh, a week long stay with a nomadic family in Agir. Half an hour, 40 minutes drive from uh, where I sit now. I know what I want to talk about today is how to visit a nomad family and why to visit a nomad family. And I'll start with why. The herding culture is uh, everything in Mongolia. It's the foundation, it's the roof, it's the walls of Mongolia. It's so much a part of the country, of the identity, of the living culture, of the society, of the economy, of everything in Mongolia. To an extent, I don't think you find in uh, any other countries in uh, in the world in 2024, uh, herding culture is is Mongolia. Even though uh, half the population, approximately uh, approximately half the population of Mongolia lives in and uh, close to Ulaanbaatar, everybody in uh, Mongolia, uh, your uh, immigration officer, your airline pilot, your train conductor, your hostel uh, owner, your shopkeeper, uh, you name it. Everybody has either uh, grown up in Agir or have family, friends living in Agir. Everybody knows a nomad and everybody to some extent is a nomad. Of course there are no rules without exceptions and I think you can find exceptions in uh, UB. But that is so much exception to the rule that the rule itself is generally valid. So, if you are interested in Mongolia, uh, you simply cannot cannot not visit uh, a herding community. It's it's fairly easy to to arrange. As I said, everybody knows a nomad. Uh, if you go to your guest house owner, he or she, if he or she want to can arrange a stay with a family for you. Uh, that will uh, normally be an arrangement for, uh, where you where you pay something. It would generally be a family who takes visitors to uh, supplement their income. But uh, I can tell you uh, that doesn't make it uh, less uh, genuine. Uh, you are a paying guest, uh, but you are a guest. And uh, what happens next is very much up to you because the Mongols are very generous, they are very helpful and they are very open to you. Both my stays were arranged through guest houses. The first, I guess, uh, the first nomad family I went to was uh, out from UB guest house in Ulan Bator. She knows a family close to what is called the Little Gobi. I stayed there for a week and that was very, very successful. I was actually the first uh, tourist they, they had. So both they and I was sort of uh, a little bit fish out of water. We came from very different cultures, background, and it was a language thing. So uh, it was sometimes a little awkward, but all the time it was very nice, very interesting, very fascinating. Second family was arranged by a, a guest house here in uh, Tsetselag. Family that lives uh, 40 minutes from here. They are not their first guest, but almost their first guest. They too are very, very new to this game. And you often come to a family who, to some extent, take visitors for a, a fair sum of money, I would say here because I paid on my both stays but I didn't pay very much it was a very fair price and those families they knew what they wanted even though they were very new the first family actually had had known guests before me I was their first the second family was also very new to it I was not their first but uh, they were very new to it but they understood what I wanted and were extremely accommodating the food is uh, quite an interesting chapter when it comes to visiting a nomad family. Uh, they use very little from the big society, to put, put it that way. They, they use what they have. And uh, that means uh, a lot of meat, a lot of dairy products. And it's a heavy diet. It's a really, really heavy diet. Uh, if you come there as a vegetarian, 
uh, your only choice is to bring your own food because uh, they can't ac accommodate you uh, in that way and uh, very very little vegetable greenery exists out there it is meat it is milk milk products all the way there is some vegetable in between but since that is uh, something that they have to transport in they don't grow themselves that is something you don't get much of it's a supplement they use no spice they use very little salt they use very little herb so it can be quite tasteless so bringing along a bottle of chili or bringing along a little salt bringing along a little spice could be a good idea i didn't drink a single drop of water actually uh, i got all my uh, liquid from etsea which is uh, a mix of milk water and a little salt it is somewhat similar to the tibetan milk tea but not exactly not exactly it's, it's a it's a it's a difference and also i drank uh, liters upon liters upon liters of uh, irag the fermented horse milk i think i was drinking three liters of uh, horse milk every every day i was uh, started in the morning and uh, the bar was open and uh, i i had to beg please let me eat the rest tomorrow i was so full that um, i didn't know what to do and the, the, the nomads, they, they keep filling up. And in the second camp I visited, there was uh, three gears with three families, related families. And I experienced that first I was having dinner in one gear, heavy dinner in one gear. Then coming home to be served a second heavy dinner. And then comes number gear number three where I also is supposed to eat. W worth mentioning, because that can be a challenge, is you are supposed to eat your food. Problem is that uh, you don't uh, serve yourself. Usually the housewife serve, and uh, they are generous, very, very generous. So you get a load of food, and you sort of don't have a choice. You have to be prepared to eat like a Viking berserk, basically. It's uh, it's It's a challenge. It's a challenge to eat like a man in, in Nomadland. Sometimes they uh, eat very, very lightly during the day. They can have a small meal and then uh, nothing, depending on what, what they do, what work they have. And often there is some food ready so you can small eat during the day in quite an informal way. And the uh, sea is always there. The, uh, Ayurag is always there, so food you will not lack. Formally I was uh, paying for three meals a day. I think de facto I was eating six. It's, um, it's very, very generous. It's very heavy food. A lot of uh, Westerners just struggle with it, at least to begin with, because we are not used to eat that much meat, that much fat. And uh, we are also not used to drinking that much milk, eating that much milk products. It is basically what you live on. You are supposed to eat what you get. It's a not throw away food society. It's very bad form to, to throw away food there. Very, very bad. Also, uh, bring a gift. That's very much part of the Mongolian culture to bring a gift when you uh, enter a home. When I asked my uh, hostess in UB what to bring, she was uh, sort of almost shrugging off. Bring anything. Bring anything, because these people live out in uh, nowhere and uh, have access to very, very little. So uh, I was thinking a little bit and I ended up uh, buying chocolate to the first family. I found a shop in UB selling a lot of different good chocolate. Not the uh, barbaric low-class chocolate that doesn't melt even if you use a flame torch good chocolate and that was very popular 
so popular that uh, one of the plates actually ended up in the house altar. And when I left, I actually got some small gifts myself. I got a bottle of uh, horse milk vodka, which I still have. I got a bottle of Ayrag, which I had to consume right away because that gets sour in a day or two. And the housewife made a beautiful little cord of uh, black and white uh, yak wool. Biggest surprise was actually I was gifted a yak, gifted a white yak. I don't know what form that ownership actually had formally because it was clear to both sides that the yak had to remain in the flock. I couldn't take it anywhere, no way of taking it. So I don't know if that was sort of a symbolic thing for next visit because I intend to visit that family again or if it is something I actually, if I so desired, could take away and for that matter sell. I'm not sure. But I was gifted and the whole and the husband several times I said it's my yak. So whatever you bring those uh, nomads, you will get it back one way or another. They are very generous, they are very hospitable, it's, uh, it's great people. Safety, everybody thinks about safety. The only thing I would say there is use common sense and be happy. The nomads are honest people in general, they are peaceful, honest people. And nothing will happen, nothing will disappear. Just use common sense, be normally careful and don't think more about it. And I have a single story about anything happened to any other people going there the same way as I have done. Privacy is something uh, you have to be prepared to not have. A gear is a small place and there is no curtains, there is no room to hide in. Everything uh, happens out in the pu public. Everybody see everything, everybody hear everything. Everybody look another way when they are supposed to and so should you, but everything is registered. There is no privacy. Also there is no uh, toilet, formal toilet. You are assigned a place where you go to take a dump. And that can be, uh, because of topography, that can be actually quite visible. So there, there is no, there is no uh, privacy. So there is no uh, showers. Most of the nomads have uh, very little water, they are very sparse. So it's what you can call a cut wash with water uh, distributed almost literally in a teaspoon. It's, um, it's very scarce. Some nomads have a stream nearby and of course then the situation is different. Some no nomads have a lake nearby. But very many of them live on the plain where the water source is either a well or a spring or something far away relatively. So water is a sore point. You will not get a shower, you will get very primitive washes. Usually somebody will uh, help you pouring the water for you and be very sparse about it. Language is uh, quite a big issue uh, for visiting those nomads. And nobody basically speaks English, N not a word. The best thing you can do is to download a translator, English, Mongolian or whatever language you prefer to Mongolian, because um, you will not be able to, to communicate very much without that. Uh, I used, uh, I was not smart and I didn't download. I only used uh, Google Transla Translate. It worked. But uh, at some time, at times, it, it was uh, difficult because connection could be very, very spotty. So sometimes it could take a lot of time, a lot of delay, a lot of frustration to get a message through. And that's basically what I have to say about uh, the nomadic stay here and now. I hope uh, this can be uh, to help for somebody, to inspiration for somebody, because I think you should go visiting a nomad family. The nomads are Mongolia and Mongolia are nomads. To put it simply. If there are questions I would uh, be very happy to uh, answer but until then it's uh, goodbye for me here in Zetelag.